Okay, everyone, welcome to um, our third town hall series um, webinar on student life and athletics. My name is Jessica Mix and I am the Director of Enrollment here at Carondelet High School. And I'm gonna quickly introduce, we have two teams here with us. If our student life team would please wave their hands. And if our athletics team would please give a hello. We're joined by Mr. Cushing, our principal. Hello, Kevin, we, yeah, <laughs> process of elimination. Kevin Cushing. <laughs> and then we're also joined, we're going to be joined by five students. Um, one of them is going to hop on after her practice, Audrey Julian, but we're joined by Stella Tuffley, Mariana Aiello, Sarah Bryn Owens, and Isabella Varan Sanchez. So I'm going to turn it over to Miss Payne uh, to lead us in prayer. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Um, we are going to say just a, a short prayer that was written by one of the Sisters of St. Joseph, the um, group of women who founded our school. So just taking a moment to um, settle into our space and become aware of our breath. And maybe just let go of whatever we need to let go of today. God of inclusive love, inflame our hearts with the fire of your love, that we may build bonds of relationship and respect among all. Our story springs from a small group of courageous women who wove a pattern of inclusive love across France and across our world. May the sacred threads of their story impel us to action action that stirs up love in our world and calls us to weave the threads of your generous love into the fiber of our beings and in the activities of our daily lives. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> and now I'd like to introduce our principal, Mr. Cushing. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for attending. I know there's not much else going on in the world. Um, just wanted to, by way of introduction, let everyone know that we, we fully understand um, that when we talk about our, the educational opportunities at Crondelet, we, we really do focus on the whole child. So we've talked a lot about academics already uh, and we're very proud of what we've done with our academic program. But um, I know firsthand that we learn as much outside the four walls of the classroom and outside the academic realm as we do inside that realm. Um, so when you hear about our, our um, faith formation and opportunities for spiritual growth through what we do on campus um, and on our retreats, when you, you find out about our club and activities program and the growth that happens with our student leadership and the opportunities to build community that's an integral, integral part of our sisterhood um, and with our athletics, um, I, again, I know that we often learn more on our field to play than we do anywhere else. And some of those cliches associated with sports, um, they're, they're cliches, but they're also very true. And we have obviously some very outstanding athletic programs and we're proud of all of them. And when you put all those together along with what we offer academically, it really does create a very unique uh, opportunity for growth and development for all of our young women. And um, you also hear a little bit about some of the support that we offer through our student life team as well. So. You're going to get a lot of information. Look forward to answering any questions you might have. And again, um, a warm welcome to all of you. Thank you, Mr. Cushing. Um, just to remind you, we have a question and answer feature at the bottom of the webinar that all of our attendees can use to ask questions throughout the webinar. We will also have about 20 minutes at the end um, where we'll answer some of your questions live. So we'll get to as many as we can while the, while the webinar is taking place, but we're gonna post questions to our both our panelists and our students. So please keep some student questions in mind as well. Um, and we'll get to those at the end. Okay, and I'm gonna uh, turn it over to uh, Jennifer Reinwald, our Vice Principal of Student Life. Hello and um, welcome. So glad to um, have you all here tonight to listen to a little bit about the student experience. Um, through student life and through athletics. Um, the first thing I'd like to do before I get started is just spend a little bit of time to share this, our department, student life department's philosophy. 
We frame our work um, in the guiding spirit of the charism of the Sisters of St. Joseph, which is unifying love. And so to that end, our efforts um, all seek to build community, develop inclusive um, uh, community with each other, um, celebrate diversity, build equity, use restorative practices, and really develop the whole person. Um, all of which aligns to the Sisters of St. Joseph's charism. And so our areas of work um, in student life is campus ministry, um, student activities, uh, wellness counseling, um, and deans uh, and attendance, um, some of which, um, some of whom are here tonight to share uh, with you a little bit about our programs. So with um, no further um, pauses, I'm going to hand it over to our director of campus ministry, who's going to share um, with all of us a little bit about uh, spiritual uh, nourishment um, and the other programs that campus ministry puts on. And her name's Evie Payne. Hi, everyone. Again, thank you for joining us tonight. Um, like Jennifer Reinwald said, I think one thing that's really special about Crondelat is our approach um, to really care for the whole person. And, um, and the tradition that the sisters left for us. And so even though we don't have any sisters living or working on campus anymore, their spirit is still alive in us. And we're responsible for keeping that spirit going. Um, and so that's kind of at the heart of what we do in campus ministry is try to create an atmosphere where the spirit of inclusion and love is, um, is carried on for the sisters of the St. Joseph. So in, in uh, campus ministry, we kind of have three like major areas of what we do. There's prayer, there's retreats, and then there's service and advocacy. And um, prayer can be anything from daily prayer on Instagram to a great big giant school-wide prayer service. Um, and then retreats also can be something really small in a classroom or some, some kind of big event. And the the, one of the favorite retreats that you'll get to hear a lot more about later if you continue on in the process of applying is our freshman retreat called Alpha. And um, girls, little uh, raise the roof if you went on Alpha, students. They're like, really, do I have to raise the roof? Um, so the Alpha retreat is designed just for our fresh girls and um, they stay after school on Friday and they stay all night. They run around campus. We have fun getting to know the place, getting to know each other, um, some games, some activities, some, some, some sharing, and then a big sleepover in um, like this central place on our campus called the inner court where all the girls throw out their sleeping bags and sleep on the floor. It's like a rite of passage. Um, but that's just the beginning of like our bigger retreat program that's offered for all the students. And the retreats kind of build on one another and there's retreats available every year. And so the same kind of model is used with our um, service and advocacy stuff. So similarly to Alpha, Frosh Day of Service happens freshman year in the fall semester. And that is a day where we get to really introduce, formally introduce the Frosh students to the tradition of serving the dear neighbor um, and learning a little bit about what it's like to serve others and why we serve others. So the whole Frosh class gets to go out on buses to different places and do community service for the morning and come back and reflect and talk about it in the afternoon. And again, that's just the beginning of four years of opportunities then for our students to reach out outside of themselves, outside of even our own school community and learn about serving others and also learn about why we need to serve others and start to try to fix problems, which is social advocacy. So we, um, we really wanna empower students not just to um, do volunteer work, but also to start figuring out how they can be a part of creating change in our, in our world. So those are kind of the three basic parts of um, what campus ministry looks like. We have a student leadership team who is made up of um, freshmen, sophomores, and juniors and seniors. So it's one of those unique experiences where you can be on a council of students that aren't all in your grade. Um, and they help to guide and plan and shape all of the activities that we do. Um, the, la the only, the last thing I wanna say though is 
um, a lot of times people approach me and they say, oh, well, we're not Catholic and um, well, we have to do this or what if we don't know this prayer? And I always try to reassure people that um, the Sisters of St. Joseph have taught us um, unifying love. That means we're here for everyone. We are inclusive and um, everyone is welcome. And so we don't ever want students or families to feel like they don't belong just because they may come from a different faith tradition. So um, super open to talking with people about their experience. We even have students on our leadership council who are not Catholic, which is super important so that we can understand perspective of all the families that we serve. Um, so just wanted to try to help um, those of you who may not be coming from the Catholic tradition feel welcome and a part of the community as well. And I'm happy to answer questions towards the end, but I think I'm gonna turn it over to, am I supposed to introduce the new person, the next person? Maggie Latier, Miss Latier, class of, I don't know, 2000 something, she's a baby. I, I taught her her senior year. Um, Ms. Latier, our Director of Student Activities, is amazing. So take it away, Maggie. Well, thank you, Ms. Payne. I appreciate it. I do have quite a few teachers that are on this, uh, on this Zoom. So I got a special bond with lots of people here. So um, I'm Maggie Latier, uh, Director of Student Activities, Class of 2013. Very, very, very proud alum of Crondelet. Um, I think it's something that really speaks highly of our school. When you do look at our faculty staff pages, you actually can see that we have a very strong alumni population that actually comes back to work at Crondelet because it is such a special place. Um, I really, uh, for me, student activities is all about trying to find your place on campus, whether that's through a club, through student leadership, through um, our activities that we put on, it's really just about, my goal is to try to help students find uh, something that they're interested in. And if it doesn't exist yet, I help them make it. And so you should see the different club proposals I get on a weekly basis. There have been Donut Aficionados Club, there's been Bocce Ball Club, there's been Italian Food Appreciation Club. We, um, I'm not the, you know, I don't try to judge what everybody wants to do. I just wanna help them find a place to do it. So. Uh, speaking of clubs, we have five different types of clubs on campus. So we have enrichment clubs, special interest, honor societies, service and social advocacy clubs, and affinity groups. And we have over 45 clubs this year, and we consistently stay around that mark, usually um, with the strongest uh, portion of those clubs actually being our service and social advocacy clubs. We have a lot of students that end up creating these awesome projects or awesome organizations and groups. We've had girls go on to make nonprofits through our club program. Uh, so it really is a special program for students to get involved in, but any student can start their own club. Um, they just need an adult. So that's something that's really, we're really proud of our club program. Another thing that I wanna plug is we have lots of different student leadership opportunities. So Edie talked about, or Ms. Payne talked about our spiritual life council but we also have a bunch of other leadership opportunities. Um, roughly one in eight students has a formal leadership position, but I think that that number is actually getting closer to two in eight um, or one in four, I know math. <laughs> um, and so one of the councils that's really special is our freshman only council. It's called Frosh Council. It's comprised of only freshmen. They are in charge of planning events, lunchtime activities, evening engagements, all sorts of different things, initiatives uh, for freshmen specifically, but we also have an associated student body that is comprised of people from all different grades. Um, and they put on lots of the whole school focus and they're really trying to make sure that, you know, we're always keeping a lens on everyone. But we also have uh, a really robust peer counseling program that Stacey Bassanio will be talking about, um, as well as our ambassador program that Jess Nix is the head of as well. So we really are trying to build leadership skills in our students. We try to make sure that we're always looking at different professional development opportunities for our students that are in leadership. Um, and so I'm very just excited about what we have been offering and what we continue to strive for with that program. Um, and one of the biggest things with leadership freshman year specifically is um, we don't do elections. They're all interview based. So every single student gets to have a one-on-one -on -one interview uh, or a one-on-three -on -three sometimes with a panel where they get to not have to worry about being in a group. They don't have to worry about giving a speech in front of their peers. It's really just about them 
you know, talking about themselves. And we really try to make sure that it's not just the girl that's done student leadership all, you know, her entire life. Um, we pick people from all different schools, public, private. You don't have to have gone to the biggest feeder school to get on to, um, to our councils because it's not a popularity contest. It's really just about trying to create a well-balanced group of girls that, um, you know, re represents the whole class. Um, and so the really the last thing that I love talking about is uh, our connection with De La Salle. Student activities is probably the one of the biggest partners that goes in with De La Salle. We really try to make sure that we have dances and rallies and different events all the time with De La Salle in collaboration with them. So it's really a special part of activities is where you get to have um, all sorts of different collaborations with them. And it really shakes up kind of how things go. But I think that's one of the special things that um, that activities gets to be part of is our relationship with De La Salle. And so I would be happy to answer any questions you have about leadership or our lunchtime activities or clubs, anything that relates to our student activities program. Uh, but otherwise, I would like to pass it off to Mrs. Bisano, who is also absolutely fabulous. But I think that you're going to get a common theme here that we all really like each other. So, um, but we mean it. <laughs> so take it away, Stacy. Thank you very much, Maggie. Um, my name's uh, Stacy Bisano, and I'm one of two wellness counselors at Crondelette. And as it's been said already, our wellness program is just very much in line with Crondelette's focus on the whole student. Um, our program really emphasizes social emotional learning and that awareness that really um, healthy social emotional development absolutely goes hand in hand with learning and with academic success. And that awareness that both are really important and it's that healthy balance um, really being the key to overall student and, and adolescent development and well-being. So as wellness counselors, we are fortunate um, and honored to get to be available to students throughout the school day. And we're really there to provide individual support, group support um, around just areas of personal concern that students might have. Um, stress management, communication skills, talking through kind of how do you strike that healthy school life balance. Um, so all of those sorts of things. And we also serve as a source of support and referral for parents and families as well. We have the opportunity to get into classrooms to do wellness programming and have conversation with students, which we love. And one of the parts of our job that we really um, adore has to do specifically with freshmen. Um, we facilitate our um, school's peer counseling program in which we train a group of 20 to 30 students during their junior year to become um, peer counselors their senior year. And these senior students really then are assigned small groups of freshmen, we call them family groups, um, and there are about eight. Um, and they stick with that family group throughout um, their freshman year. So they really serve as mentors um, and big sisters um, to welcome freshmen into Crondelet to facilitate their transition into high school and, and really throughout their freshman year. They um, meet with their freshman family groups regularly, um, as well as having an opportunity to participate with them in several freshman uh, activities. Starting in the spring with um, Frosh Welcome, um, many of our peer counselors are involved with Alpha Retreat and connecting with freshmen on that, um, our Frosh Picnic, and, and our Frosh Community Program. So um, again, any questions, I'm happy to take them, them after. Um, and I know we have one of our students is a peer counselor, so I'm putting a little plug for Stella ahead of time. Um, thank you. Thank you so much um, to our student life team. We have a wonderful week. Our team is even larger than that, if you can believe it. Um, it it's, a lot, it's a huge department that we put a ton of resources into because we truly believe in it. Um, but these are just some of the fabulous people that help run um, lots of our programs for all of our students. And so at this point, I'm going to turn it over to Kat Arroyo, who's our assistant athletic director, to um, steer the ship a little bit to talk about our fabulous athletics program. Thanks, Jess. Mm -hmm. Um, hi, everybody. My name is Kat Arroyo, and I am the Assistant Athletic Director here. Um, unfortunately, Scott Kennedy could not be here tonight, but I wanted to introduce you to the rest of our team. Um, we have Jessica Rollins, who is our Head Athletic Trainer. 
We have Danny Burnett, who is our head strength and conditioning coach. And we have Diane Milano, Milano who is our athletics logistics support. And just to kind of give you a brief overview of our athletics um, teams and program, um, it consists of 18 sports with a total of 36 teams. So it's a combination of freshman teams, JV teams, and varsity teams. Um, at school here, we have about 804 students that fluctuates yearly, but um, of those, uh, we have about 464 of them are athletes. Um, 102 are dual sport athletes, and four of them are triple sport athletes. So just so you can see that just because you do one sport doesn't mean you can't do multiple sports here. We're super supportive of having the girls do multiple sports. Um, and just like it's been said um, over and over, uh, we pride ourselves in teaching to the whole person and that extends into athletics as well. Uh, we love to compete and win, but we put just as much emphasis on academics, sportsmanship, time management, working with the team to achieve a common goal, as well as many other life skills that can be learned through sport. Our staff is here to ensure every student athlete reaches their potential on and off of the field. And then um, going into our seasons of play, kind of give you an idea of what it would look like. So if you play multiple sports right now, um, in the fall, tryouts are around next August. They will be in August 9th. But we have cross country, dance, golf, rugby, sideline cheer, tennis, volleyball, and water polo in the fall, in a traditional fall. Um, and then uh, tryouts for dance and cheer are in early May. So Miss Mix will be sending out information in your, um, if you decide to attend, um, attend a Crondelette, she will send you information in the spring about those. And then winter, we have basketball and soccer and the tryout date is November 1st. Um, now, if you're a fall season sport athlete and you wanna participate in a winter season sport, that is totally fine. Um, and even if your, if your season of sport goes into the winter, you will have an allotted time to try out once your fall season is over. So traditionally we have the girls finish their current season of sport before they try out for the next sport. Um, and then in the spring, we have um, tryouts are around February 7th. We have badminton, beach volleyball, competitive sport cheer or stunt, uh, diving, lacrosse, rugby 15s, softball, swimming and track and field. So these are just kind of give you a layout of what a typical year would look like um, and where the sports kind of lie and when you would be trying out for each one. And then another comment or another question that we get a lot is because our athletic complex is off campus, how will my daughter get to her practices if she practices at the um, athletic complex? And we have a transportation, uh, we have a transportation department where the bus comes and picks them up at school about 10, 15 minutes after the last bell and it will drive them over to the CAC. And then um, you will pick up your daughter there after practice. Um, and it's offered all five days of the week. Right now, not because of some, because of different things. Wednesday, we didn't, we're not on campus, but in a typical year, um, it's offered all five days. And so then I'm gonna pass it on to uh, our head strength and conditioning coach, uh, Danny Burnett. Hi everyone, I'm Danny, and I'm your strength and conditioning coach here over at Crondelet. Um, so I'm going to give you guys kind of a brief overview of what we do here at our performance center. And then if you have any questions for me, feel free to put it into the chat. Um, so first thing at first is that usually coming in the weight room, these girls, a lot of the time it's their first time lifting. So we set, we start off on a prep phase. This prep phase introduces girls into the weight room. So it teaches them what weights to use, um, what movements we do. It introduces them into squatting, into lunging, into explosive movement on the bar. So learning the very basics of Olympics. It also teaches them proper jumping and landing mechanics, um, which is huge. Um, we teach them basically just how to lift within this prep phase. We also will use this prep phase reintroducing athletes into weightlifting after their season. So we give them a little break. And then once we get them back, we don't wanna just throw them into a program. We just reintroduce them back to this prep phase. Um, it can really be used in different facets um, and I utilize it all the time. Um, I don't quite do sports specific training. Um, right off the bat, mainly because it is many of the girls first time lifting. So I really focus on building general strength and teaching proper movement patterns. Um, a lot of what we do is not so concerned about the, how heavy the weight is that we're lifting, but just it being a good pattern. So how can we translate what they're doing over onto the field or the pool or the court or anything like that? 
Um, everything we do is a digressive and progressive format. So we start off at the very basic, um, teaching a proper squat. Um, and then from there, we advance it as we can. Um, obviously, each athlete is a little bit different. So we modify when we need to. Um, a big thing that we work with a lot is a lot of athletes will come in with like a small um, ankle injury or a small um, hamstring pull or something from their sport. Um, and a big thing I like to emphasize is not just sitting out of weights that day, but working around, working around it. So if we can't do anything for the hamstring, we can do a lot for the quad and glute and get a lot of core work in and upper body still. So that's one thing I really try and teach the girls. Um, a big focus on ours for strength and conditioning is decreasing risk of injury. So our athletics here are super competitive. Um, and a lot of our girls do play club sports. A lot of them play recreational too, but we do get a lot of girls that play year round. So a big thing I like to tell these girls is that weightlifting is something we can do all year round as well. Um, and we use it to, like I just said, to decrease the risk of injury. And we do so by creating symmetry between the muscle groups. So between the quad and the hamstring, so they balance each other out. Um, increasing glute strength, so we really decrease the risk of those ACL injuries, knee injuries, ankle injuries. Um, teaching proper running mechanics so that the girls don't pull a hamstring um, when they're coming off of like a court sport and going into a field sport, like going from volleyball to soccer. Um, we need to re relearn to load the hamstring. Um, so teaching the girls to run and open up their gait and things like that. Um, a big part of decreasing risk of, risk of injury is reinforcing landing mechanics. Most injuries occur when the girls hit the ground, um, landing on the ground. So teaching the girls A, to absorb on landing, but then B, also teaching them to pick their feet up fast. And that also uh, ties in with a lot of what we do here is teaching the girls why we do these movements. So not just running them through a program and sending them off, but also like why we're learning, why are we, why we are using a hex deadlift bar instead of a straight bar. Um, why we are going shoes off in some movements. Um, why we are doing an agility ladder to a small short sprint after. So teaching the girls why we are doing all these things. So I just find that it also helps them build their confidence, not only in the movement themselves, but they know what they're doing is actually translating into athletics for them. Um, so that's a huge part of what we do. It's just building the athlete's confidence in the weight room to translate into the sport for them. Um, it also is, is, re, is um, rewarding learning something new and being able to build on top of that. So starting off with something super light. So maybe they're using 15 pound dumbbells when they first start and they slowly build their confidence um, and start picking up heavier weight, which is awesome. Um, they also learn to work really hard and work really hard as a group. Um, it's really awesome walking in that weight room when you see girls teaching each other some of the movements. Um, and then they get stronger, which is a big one for us too. Um, also why this kind of gives our athletes an edge is that we do have a lot of girls that go on to play sports in college at different levels. And many of these athletes go on and they are in a weight room in college. And that's oftentimes college athletes for females first time being in a weight room. Um, so for us, these girls having one, two, three, four years of lifting experience going into a college weight room, they already feel so comfortable there because they've been doing it for so long. Um, they know what dumbbells they, to use. They know what bands to use. They know when they need assistance. And they also know to ask if they need modification. They know to ask questions if they don't know the movements. Um, so that's a big part of why having a strength and conditioning program is so huge for our athletics program because it just fully encompasses building our athletes up, decreasing risk of injury, increasing athleticism, but then also building their confidence, not just as an athlete, but also just as a female athlete and a female student learning to ask questions and um, just kind of being comfortable in a new environment. Um, so like I said, if you have any questions, I know I talk a little quick. Um, if you wanted more information, feel free to put it into the, into the question and answer and I'll get to it. Um, next is Jessica Rollins, our athletic trainer. Hello all, my name is Jessica Rollins and I'm the athletic trainer here at Crondelet. Um, I am available to all student athletes for any injury evaluation, prevention of injuries, emergency and acute care, concussion care, monitoring any environmental situations such as air quality, which has been huge this last year, and heat and humidity if that is ever an issue. I also help students with monitoring any injury rehabilitations from any injuries or surgeries they've had. So I can help be a part of that team with the physical therapists and the surgeons to get some extra care and to get some extra exercises in if that is needed. Um, I work really closely with our strength and conditioning coach Danny to help students with injury prevention and rehabilitation just to make sure that the student is getting taken care of to the best of our abilities. Um, and I also consult and communicate with the physicians, coaches, and parents, just to make sure everyone's on the same page. We never want 
one person to know and not the other person to know. So just making sure that the student is once again getting that full circle of care here. I'm available at majority of the games and practices and provide the medical coverage for those events. So if anything happens, um, I'm there to take care of everything medically, any injuries, emergencies, all of that good stuff. Thank you so much, athletics team. Um, I'm gonna now turn it over to our students and ask them to introduce themselves and tell you a little bit about their background. Um, Cause I know the adults, you know, we're great but you really wanna hear it um, from the students themselves. So let's go ahead and start off with Audrey. Would you introduce yourself and, and give a little bit of info? Hi guys, um, my name is Audrey Julian. I'm a junior at Condolet and um, Athletics has been a huge part of my Crondall experience. I've played water polo, um, I played basketball, I did softball, and then I transitioned into swimming. And then um, on campus, I am a part of uh, junior class council and I was a part of sophomore council last year. Highly recommend doing leadership, shout out to Miss Latier. Mm -hmm. And um, I actually um, and loved my experience here. And part of the reason why I did come here is my mom actually went here. So that's really cool. Um, I'm called a legacy. So if you see girls walking around with like legacy shirts, it means that their moms went there or they had a family member that came there. So um, it's really cool that I get to go to the same high school my mom did. Um, and yeah. Thanks, Audrey. Stella, do you want to introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Stella and I'm a senior. For sports, I play volleyball at Crondolet and also most recently beach volleyball, which has been a lot of fun. And on campus, I'm a part of Spiritual Life Council and also I'm a part of peer counseling. Um, all of these things put together have really made my Crondolet experience. Getting to know like different people from different types of backgrounds has been a lot of fun and has made my Cronulla experience so good. Thanks, Stella. Sarah Bryn. Hi, I'm Sarah Bryn Owens. I am a junior at Cronulla and I have been on dance team for all three years and I did track my freshman year. I'm currently doing weight training, which is super fun. Um, and I got the opportunity to go on Venevir Salinas last year, which is a service trip. And I'm currently doing Venevir DC virtually this year. And I'm also part of two service clubs on campus. Um, what's so special about Cronulet is it's not just a school. I don't just go to Cronulet each day um, to go to my classes, but I'm part of this sisterhood and I get to go to practice after school with my peers and be part of all these different different um, organizations on campus. So super special. Thanks, Sarah Bryn. Isabella, you want to introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. I'm Isabella Varan, and I am a junior at Crondolette. So I'm involved with a lot of aspects at Crondolette. Currently, I'm on um, the lacrosse team. So I have preseason here at the CAC, so I'm in my uh, training gear. I also do weight training with Danny twice a week. And on campus, I run a club that a friend, and I, a friend of mine and I started um, just to reach out to kids in our community. And I'm also part of a couple other clubs. And I also attended Benavera Salinas, which like Sarah Brin said, was an amazing opportunity. And it was very eye-opening to see how much of an impact each of us students can make and how Crondolette really fosters that and they give us the opportunity to really find our calling and what we want to do and they help us be able to do that. So I'm really grateful for Crondolette. Thank you. And finally, Mariana, you wanna uh, introduce yourself? Hi, I'm Mariana Aiello, I'm a sophomore. Um, I, for as far as sports go, I was on the track team right before COVID, but then this season was canceled. Um, and then um, as far as on campus, I'm a part of Spiritual Life Council, as Stella said, and I'm also a part of the choir club. And last year as a freshman, I was also a shadow host. So um, my experience has really shaped me at Condolette by letting me just be my true self and be 
out and doing service and really showing my gifts that God has given me, um, like caring for others and just really putting my best foot forward in the world. And so that's how my experience has shaped me. Thank you, ladies. Okay, we are gonna move on to the question answer portion. Um, so one of the questions we have on the table, um, and this is for the students, so anybody can jump in. Students, how would you describe your school spirit and how much, the, how much support do your sports teams get? Um, so recently, starting last year, we had a thing called an SOS game. So that SOS stands for support our sisters. And so pretty much a Schoology message would be sent out to everyone and it would encourage everyone to come to the game and everyone would get like a t-shirt or like I think cool sunglasses was at one of them. And um, it really helped with having people like packing our stands and just had the energy so live, especially at the volleyball games. And I know I went out to a couple of the water polo SOS games and it's really nice to feel the support from your sisters and brothers across the street as well and also going out there and supporting your sisters. I wanna add something really quick as well. Um, with the, S along with the SOS games, it was just like every week, because sports is such a big part of Kronola and everyone knows that, but it's the fact that girls who don't even play sports will come out to the games to cheer their classmates on, or girls who play like soccer will go out to lacrosse games or to basketball. So just awesome to see um, our classmates there supporting us. I know last year when we had a dance, um, we had like this fun spirit dance that leadership put on um, the lacrosse team. We were able to go after practice. And I think it just showed like, it's not just sports are separate from leadership or campus ministry. It's all the students come together and spirit at Crondola is huge. And it's something awesome and everyone's part of it. Adding on to what, um, <laughs> go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Adding on to what Bella was saying is, um, the team camaraderie, it's um, really special at Crondolette. I know like same season sports kind of have a little rivalry because, you know, we compete for the same game times or whatever. But I know um, just having played multiple sports, we go out and we purposely support other um, teams. And it's actually super fun, um, super supportive. And the, the energy at our sports games are just insane. It's like infectious. Everyone's excited to be there. Um, and especially if you're playing um, the sport, it's just really fun. Um, so it's something you can't really get anywhere else. It's only at Crondolette. I would also like to add that like not only do we support each other's in different sports and teams, but from my experience um, on dance team, like the team itself is supportive to each other so much. Like we have all these text group chats and we're always like, you know, asking each other if we're good and how we're doing. And it's always like, we've been so close and we're always there for each other. So I think that's really important and special at Crondolette how the teams are so closely bonded um, with each other. Thanks ladies. Um, for our athletics teams, are there any freshman teams that have a no cut policy um, and just in case students want to try a new sport? There are some that are no cut. Um, it's more of a, it's not that they're no cut. It's that we can hold a larger number with those groups safely and having the girls participate. So um, yes, there are some teams that are offered that will not cut because they are able to hold a larger number, but there are some that are cut. Mm -hmm. Will you name those teams that can hold a larger number? Um, like cross country, swimming. Um, I know that with water polo, we haven't cut in the last couple of years, but, um, but as it gets to be more, uh, um, more interest in it, there may have to be that just because it could possibly be a safety issue to have too many people in the pool at one time. Um, same with uh, like volleyball is cut, basketball is cut, it's soccer is cut because it just gets to be there's too many that are interested and it's more of a safety issue when it comes down to it. And another thing is that just the amount of playing time, um, there just isn't enough playing time for everybody. And um, we want people to be able to have it be worth their time and um, away from their studies. So um, swimming, cross country, um, there is also, we have beach volleyball, we have rugby, 
those are all new. I know that softball hasn't had cuts in the last couple of years. Um, so those are just some that we have that haven't had those cuts. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I don't think there are. Oh, and Isabel, thank you. Uh, lacrosse hasn't had cuts in the last couple of years either. Thanks, Bella. Maybe and track and field. Track, track and field as well, yeah. yeah. Track and field as well. Um, okay, so another question. So this is for the students. So aside from spirit ladies, um, what makes Crondelet unique and different from other schools, um, both as a school and also from an athletics program? Um, I would say personally, like coming from like my experience with my public school friends, there's a sense of sisterhood, obviously, but like you feel support from all people, like younger than you and older than you and that's something that's super unique to Crondelet like everyone is so accepting and loving of each other and is there for you to support you and help you out and there's just a very kind energy at Crondelet. To add on to that also the fact that like all year round we have we're given the opportunities to have preseason or get out in the weight room and work with Danny and Jess so the school really creates these opportunities for us to get better on and off the field and at school as well. Like while we're not at the CAC, all the teachers support student athletes and uh, even students in other clubs to ensure that we're having that healthy balance between our sport and like school academics. So I think just like Stella was saying, the support we're provided from everyone, the teachers, the staff and our classmates. And adding on to what Bella was saying, uh, the sisterhood is definitely unique, but I really want to shout out to my teachers. I think the teaching and the faculty really make Crondelet what it is. Um, obviously, the girls make Crondelet, um, but I feel like the teachers do such a good job of making sure that they're fostering you as an individual and not just another student they have. Um, and I've been injured and I've been sick and I it's so nice to know that I have teachers emailing me noticing I wasn't in class saying hey like how are you hope you're doing okay let me know you know what I can do um and so teachers really care about you as an individual um regardless of your academics which is um it's really heartwarming and it really makes you feel supported and loved absolutely and then I have a question for you Miss Payne um, how many students per grade typically go on retreats? <laughs> well, the alpha retreat, um, usually in a class of 200 freshmen, about 180 attend, 190. Um, they're not mandatory. They're all optional. Well, we have one retreat sophomore year that you just attend with your, your religion class, um, but the rest of them are all optional. Um, our senior retreat, typically, there's typically not more than maybe six students total who don't attend the senior retreat. Um, so we have a lot of students attending our retreats. They're pretty popular. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. So this is a, a question again for ath athletics and it's talking about development of skills. Um, so what sports opportunities are there for girls with less organized sports um, experience? And do girls that show talent in a sport get the opportunity to develop or do they have to come in with a lot of experience in order to participate? Um, there are opportunities for, um, for girls with less organized sports. I think that they, um, we have with we have younger younger teams, so they less experienced teams like JV teams um, and freshman teams. And uh, most of our coaches are really, I mean, all of our coaches are really good at seeing potential um, in athletes when maybe that they, it's they're just coming in and starting the sport, but they have they have a lot of the athletic capabilities and prowess that are needed to be good at this sport, and they can see that. And they're, they're willing to put the effort in to teach them the finer skills um, that they would need for that particular sport. So I think when there are, we go through the tryout process, 
they're not just looking at the girls that can play right now. It's the girls that can build the program and can, can learn and grow with the program. Isabella, do you have anything to add to that? You're shaking your head. Yeah, I can just give you guys some examples because I've been through that like freshman year. I tried out for volleyball. I had played a season of it wasn't really organized volleyball, but there were girls who never played, but their enthusiasm and motivation to want to play um, had the coach like want them on the team. So I remember that was a big thing. There were girls who were like, why I make the team? I've been playing since I was five. And it came down to the fact like who wants to be there, who like wants to work with each other. And right now with lacrosse, I never picked up a lacrosse stick my freshman year, but I was like, oh, I'll try it. I have friends who play and I fell in love with it. And now I'm seeing new freshmen coming in who've never played before, but they've already gotten so much better because the coaches want all of us to improve and not even just the coaches, but the players as well. Like there's returning seniors who are uh, pulling those freshmen aside and working on different skills, just that everyone has the opportunity to develop and improve. Thank you. So if an athlete does not make a team for a seasonal sport, can they still try out for another sport that same season? We have had that opportunity. We have had that happen often. Um, I have actually, I'm the water polo coach as well. Um, there, I've had some girls that have um, come over from not making the volleyball team and they'll come over and try water polo and it's a perfect fit and it works. It's up to each coach, but for the most part, there hasn't been an issue. Um, we want the girls to participate. We want them to get that experience and all of our coaches are open to having these girls have this experience because it is so life-changing it they the girls really have a great time together they have they're all they really get a lot out of it than just the sports yeah and I know that's happened in the past with cross country um you know sometimes even with tennis you know depending on you know what's happening with the other sports there could be just a year where a ton of kids are going out for volleyball and there's only limited spaces and so then they they're given the opportunity to try other fall sports after that tryout is over okay and for Ms. Latier, how many clubs can you do at one time? So that's a really great question. And the answer is, it depends on your schedule and it depends on the clubs that you're interested in. So let's say that, you know, two clubs meet on the same day and it's consistently that they meet on the same day, you're gonna have to choose which club you're going to be part of um, in, un, unless that teacher or that, you know, um, person has been able to, uh, accommodate your schedule and you're able to go every other but typically there's not really a limit that we set for students it's really more so just about what can you feasibly be part of because your membership in a club people then rely on you to be part of the club so we really want students to make sure that they're making choices of clubs that they're part of that they're really going to um, end up following through on and we've seen that happen where the first year students are so excited and they're like, I'm signing up for 11 clubs. And then we have to kind of say, okay, let's choose three, you know, like let's pare down your time. But it's kind of nice that freshman year to be able to toe dip um, in lots of different clubs and activities and then really kind of start honing in as you move through your high school experience. Absolutely. And I think that uh, Isabella is also a really fabulous example of a student that came in didn't see the club that she had an idea of a club and then pursued it uh, with her friend Grace. And it's just really interesting. Like that is a story that happens often is that sometimes you might sign up for a few clubs and then the vibe wasn't there for you and you didn't really like, you know, what you, what the club was and maybe you want to do your own spin on something. So um, it is really, there are lots and lots and lots of ways that you can get involved with clubs specifically. Okay. And for the students, how do you balance the demands of athletics and academics? This is a really good question and I'm still figuring it out. <laughs> um, but I think um, staying organized is very um, important. Um, kind of just planning out your schedule for the week um, and knowing what you have to get done and um, what's on your what's on your schedule. And also just talking to your friends because um, everyone's in the same boat and um, I think just working together with them and um, staying organized, staying organized, staying organized <laughs> is very, very important. <laughs> um, probably my biggest advice for that is doing your homework and schoolwork on game days. So for volleyball specifically, we would like all go into a classroom and just do our work. 
before like our game starts. And I feel like that's a really good way to like stay on top of it so that you don't have to worry about doing all your work when you get home after you're tired after just playing a game. So I think doing your best to stay on top and staying ahead and talking to your teachers and communicating is definitely your best bet for staying on top of it. To kind of go off what Stella said, um, definitely time management is, it's always talked about a lot in classes. And um, yeah, staying on top of it is a lot. It's, it, you, procrastinating is not good. Um, <laughs> waiting until the last minute, right before an assignment is due is not, it's not the way to go. But um, yeah, if even if like you can get, if you have five minutes here and five minutes there, like just doing one problem out of your math homework, it can get like done a lot quicker than waiting till 20 minutes before the class. And like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot because I had my sports and all that stuff. So definitely time management and not procrastinating is a great way to handle that. I also want to add like, I know like on the outside, it looks like sports are like a big commitment and they are. But I find that I'm more productive when I have like a consistent practice time than like if I were to like work out by myself or like do some sort of ex exercise. Um, and like I've had a couple weeks in school where I just wasn't doing any sports. Like I had, I was like in the off season for like these weird two weeks and I was so unproductive. Um, and so I noticed that I really needed like my consistent practice in my routine. Um, and that kind of helped me stay on top of my schoolwork. So as daunting as it may seem, it's really doable. Once you kind of get into your routine, it just kind of becomes second nature. And it's like, you do your homework, you go to practice, come home, eat dinner, you shower, do a little bit more homework, you go to bed and, you know, like you, you get your own routine. So um, you'll be able to do it. <laughs> we actually see our student athletes GPAs go up in season often um, because of, ju of just what Audrey said, that structure um that keeping them to a schedule and that is really what keeps them productive and, and plugged in so that's that's something we definitely see as well um question where do you hold your prayer services and are students able to participate in hosting them yeah um i'm sure there's a couple of students who could answer this too um, maybe you guys can add on or say more, but we hold, for the most part, our prayer services are in what we call the Garaventa Center, which is kind of our big multi-purpose building. Um, but uh, yesterday we had a prayer service outside, right where Mr. Cushing is sitting. Um, we had a prayer service outside in front of the um, Innovation Center. And if you can see behind him, there's balconies up top. We had students standing on those balconies um, leading the prayer, speaking to everybody all spread out in the quad. It was really cool. Thank you, Mr. Cushing, for your acrobatics. Um, so we try to be really creative with where and um, what and how our prayer looks. And absolutely, they are student-led. Stella or Mariana, do you want to add to that at all? Uh, that's what we do in Spiritual Life Council or SLC. <laughs> We um, run the liturgies and prayer services and we work together and also with people outside of SLC too. Like we'll ask for um, outside people to do a reflection, which is really nice. But yeah, all of our liturgies and prayer services are student led and the choir is also all students. It's very much student involved. <laughs> yeah, adding on to what uh, Stella said, they are all are student led and it's very fun to see your classmates just kind of leading and praying with you in a different type of setting. Um, and there's there's student spiritual life council, sorry, and also can, um, music ministry. And those are like two ways that you can help lead and be a part of it. Um, music ministry basically focuses on what music they're gonna do with the liturgy. And then spiritual life council is like, the swaying the liturgies so nice and then miss Payne, they're asking if you would please expand on the sleepover at carondelet Ooh. <laughs> of course <laughs> um yeah so that's the alpha retreat this the only retreat that's like this where a hundred and well um, basically 200 people all go at once um and it's really de designed specifically for the frosh students um, and so basically you stay after school and 
you're broken into, you have a small group and then your small group belongs to a bigger group and you rotate through different activities around campus and, um, and you have conversations and you get to know people. And then towards the end of the night, we all gather um, in the inner court for some special um, surprise activities that I'm not going to reveal to you, um, but they, uh, we kind of, and we have a nice like candlelight sharing kind of moment too. And then um, everyone literally rolls out their sleeping bags all over the inner court, wall to wall. Um, and we pretend that we sleep. I don't think there's much sleeping that goes on. Um, there's a lot of flashing of cell phone flashing. I don't know, but um, it's really fun. And we really try to work with students like the the week or two leading up to it um, to make sure you kind of feel like you have a person that you're going on alpha with so that you don't have to face that moment of who am I going to put my sleeping bag next to. Um, we really want to help students like through the peer counseling program, which I'm sure Mrs. Pisanio could tell you a lot more about, but um, peer counselors really help leading up to the alpha retreat, helping students to not feel afraid once they go to the alpha retreat. Um, because the whole point of Alpha is to like start to feel like you belong, start to learn a little bit about the sisterhood, about our traditions, um, and to not feel alone. And I, I'm pretty sure people leave the Alpha retreat knowing that they will never be alone ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Payne. Um, I'm gonna, we have time for two more questions. Um, second to last question. So due to different class sizes, how difficult or easy will it be to make friends at Crondelette and where do you make key bonding moments? And I'll just say, we have students that come from over 55 middle schools every year. So it's kind of nice. Everybody's in the same boat coming in, even if you've come in with 20 students from your school or either you're the only student coming from your school. It is a nice time to just say, all right, time to mix it up, time to meet new people. And I'll let, I mean, we obviously put a lot of thought into this and a lot of planning into making sure our freshmen feel integrated into the school. Um, but I'll let students and um, our directors answer this question from their perspective as well. Yeah, I came in from a school that, well, there was only three or four other girls from my middle school coming to Connellet. So I was really looking forward to just branching out, making new friends. Um, what definitely helped was dance team because I we had auditions in May and then we made the team in summer. We had practices. And so that's where I made my first um, really good friends in at Crondelette and um, but if you don't even play a fall sport you um, getting involved in like different clubs um, will help a lot and also like just alpha in general like that is an experience I will never forget and um, like and we were in our small little peer counseling groups and then we we met with different girls um, and I met a lot of different girls that I like I've never seen before you know two months into school um, and so that was really special. So I made a lot of new bonds there too. Yeah, kind of just adding on to that, um, Carnot does a great job of um, doing like awkward, get to know people like freshmen, like <laughs> hi. Um, and it's super fun, even though we're all like, oh my gosh, what the heck? But no, um, they're really fun. And you always, you end up finding a friend at least in your first or second day. like. They're super, everyone's really um, together. And um, even if someone in older grade sees you, like they'll go up to you and then ask you and just ask how you're doing. And it's really easy to make friends and teachers do a great job of that also of being very inclusive and supportive and make and putting your, getting involved and um, even like joining a sport or if jo sports aren't your thing, joining like the clubs when we have clubs or um, going to dances when we have the freshman dance. There's so many opportunities to make a new friend and it's, it's really amazing. Also like don't underestimate like the people you have classes with. I know some of the first friends I made were like people I had like four or five of my classes with. And so we would like get our homework done together and we'd like do group chats because we all had the same teachers. So I don't know if that was done on purpose. It probably was because Chrono has a purpose behind everything, but you definitely get a bunch of the same people or a handful of people that are in most of your classes. So um, it's pretty easy to make a friend um, pretty early on. 
And then I'm going to ask our last question because I know we're pushing up here on seven o'clock and not to put you students on the spot or anything. Um, but this question is, what is the most important life lesson you think you will take away from Carondelet? So big question. <laughs> I know that's hard to answer. Um, I think this is a great question. Um, I think one of my takeaways that I'm going to take this, like after I graduate through high school is to just be really open-minded and willing to do lots of different things and being outside of your comfort zone and really focusing on your talents and your God, your God-given talents and just really embracing the fact that you were a part of this high school that loved you and supported you through the one of the hardest times in your lives and it's unforgettable and you just create bonds with people that is ever it won't ever change and it's something that I want to take away and I hope that like I can even when I'm older and I have kids that they can experience that same type of thing because it's just it's so different for every person and I think everyone should at least get a little bit of that. I think the biggest lesson that I've learned in my four years, almost four years of Condolette is that it's so important to be yourself. Like don't try to be anyone else. And at Condolette, they really allow you to be yourself. You can join hundreds of different clubs. There's so many different ones. You can join company, um, leadership, sports, and you really find yourself. And it has taught me that when you are yourself, you're living your best life and you get so much done and you like make so many new connections. And even with teachers too, like building, like not like necessarily a friendship, but like a relationship with like your teachers is so important. Cause like, that's what you get to do in the real world. Like make relationships with your bosses and Carnalette really, really teaches you all of that stuff. Yeah, one of the life lessons that I think I'll take away after my four years at Carnalette is that there's always someone there for you, whether it's your peers in your in your class or like Stella was saying, like the bonds you make with your teachers uh, is something I will never forget. Um, and then just like all of the or um, um, different the different um, organizations on campus, just like the athletic department, they're all there for you at the student life or um, the leadership and everyone's like, there's always going to be someone there for you when you're having a rough day and um, you need to pick me up. So, yeah. I think um, one of, oh, go sorry, go ahead, Bella. No, it's okay, go ahead. Okay, I'll go, <laughs> sorry. Um, <laughs> short but sweet but um one of the biggest thing is it's, it's okay to be challenged um Carnalette challenges you in a lot of ways um depending on like you know certain activities you do where your interests are but um I've really learned that sometimes being challenged is a good thing and um I I learned that like in middle school I was kind of in my comfort zone I like knew who my friends were and then coming to high school you're really kind of thrown out there a little bit um and it can be scary and it can be overwhelming. Um, but at the end, like you figure it out. Um, and there's, you know, there's adults who help you figure it out too. Um, we have like wonderful wellness counselors. We have like everything you can think of every possible problem that a high schooler has. I think we've got you covered. So, um, if you're being challenged, you're doing it right. I think one of the most um, important things I'm going to take away from being at Condolette is probably going to be that I've learned that I have a voice and like what I'm passionate about matters and that I can use my gifts that I've been given and to learn more about myself, but also share it with my community and that we don't have to change the world or do the biggest thing, but just the smallest little things can mean a lot to other people. I think Condolette has really allowed uh, me and so many other girls at our school to find the passions we have and help us um, embrace them and not be afraid to use our voice or um, do actions to help others. Thank you, ladies. And we wanna thank you so much for being with us tonight. If we didn't get your questions, I know we had a ton of questions. Don't worry, I will save them and we will email you directly and get them answered for you. Um, but again, we appreciate you being with us. Sorry that we went a little bit over um, and we will have this video recorded and posted to our admissions webpage early next week. So have a great week, everybody. And we hope to see you soon. Thank you.